Hello, good people. So I was watching this week uh, Kevin Gary's uh, websites for dummies, and uh, which is a great watch if you haven't been watching them. It's a very, very good way of pulling apart websites, getting good ideas on how to structure them, uh, content, all that sort of stuff. So uh, worth a look. If you haven't had a look at uh, Kevin's uh, YouTube channel, definitely check that out. Uh, but on that last one that um, came up this week, there was a review on a website which had a, a blob mask in the background with a image, and the whole thing was done in Photoshop. This example I'm showing here is not. Uh, the whole thing was done in Photoshop. Kevin's comment was, what if you want to change the color of that blob? And the other one actually had a before and after or a couple of other blobs around. I'm just going to do this particular point here. And the question was, could you do this with CSS where you've got an SVG for your background and you also got a cutout, but it's also masking that cutout so that it fits within that blob. And this tutorial, I'm going to show you what I've worked out. Uh, it is a way, uh, whether it's the best way or not, I can't tell you, but it is definitely a way of doing it. All right, so I'm going to start with a blank canvas. So I'm just going to grab my page and drag it across here. I started with an absolutely empty canvas. Uh, and what we have to do is start by using it, creating a structure. So I'm going to create a single section, turn that section into a grid, just, just so we've got single items to work with. Uh, with my display grid, uh, just do repeat. Uh, maybe we'll just do three columns, maybe. Uh, Three columns at one fraction each. There we go. So we've got three columns to work with um, in that container. Now I'm just going to insert three blocks. So that we've got blocks inside there that we can work with. So basically I've just very simply created a three column grid. On the center one, I'm going to use that as my example. And I'm going to give it a name, which uh, I'm going to maybe call this a blob uh, mask, uh, Bob, blob BG or background and mask. Okay, so that's the name I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a class for that as well. All right, so there's my starter. All right, now the first thing we need is an image. So I put an image in there. Got an image, and we select a cutout image that I created a while ago. Uh, this is a very simple cutout image, and that's just the girl with the background obviously cut out around her. And that's my basic image. I'm going to just grab that class name again. I'll make that, always try to use BEM name if you can. So we're going to call that the image. Uh, actually, I'll call it the figure. We're going to make it a figure. Um, and we're going to change the HTML tag of that to be a figure. Now that's going to wrap, Bricks does a really cool thing when you change this to a figure. It actually wraps the image inside the figure tag. It doesn't just change the uh, tag. Okay, so that's our structure there. Now we need to get an SVG. So what I'm using is a very simple um, basic text box and I'm going to use that for my SVG and I'll give that a, actually I'll give that a BAM name as well. Uh, da, da, da. I will call it the blob. Okay. Okay, and I probably should put a name on here as well, which will be my image. I think I called it figure. Yes, I did. All right, so now we've got a naming right. Um, so we've got a blob, BG and mask as our block. Blob, BG and mask. We've got our image as a figure, uh, definitely as a figure. And we've got our blob uh, background SVG as a blob there. All right, so now we need to create the SVG elements. And I'm going to use a simple method for this, just using a website uh, here called BlogMaker. So it's just blogmaker.app. And for this example, I just put on the maximum number of points. And the smoothness is up to you. You can make it really sharp, really smooth. Let's go for really sort of there. Let's See, we've got a view box here, and it just randomly decides these. So you just keep hitting the dice, but you find something that you think you might like. 
Okay, so maybe just do it a couple more times. Maybe that's what we like. So what we're going to do is have this is the blob background. And then we're going to extend this all the way up to use it as the mask. So we just need something that represents a kind of a shape that we'd like. All right, so I'm just going to go with this one, hit the save button. And I'm just going to leave that as blob SVG. And just open up Explorer. And I'm going to right click and open this with Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to show my toolbar here. Make sure we're on. Change that to pixels. Strange thing in Illustrator, even though I set the default to pixels, uh, when I open SVGs with a right click, it always sets it to points. Um, anyway, so there's our SVG there. Just zoom in a little bit. And it's showing me size there. Oh, by the way, if we look at the uh, artboard, from that Blob Maker app, it's always got a 200 by 200 um, artboard, which is fine. But all we need to do is fit this SVG a little bit better into that. So I would say just zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, we're really not after a specific shape. I'm going to go to the edges. Is it on the edge or past it? So I just want to make sure that's snapping properly. So right at the edge. Um, Leave that as it is there. Now you can see we've got some white space at the top here. What I'm going to do is make sure that in my transforms, over on the transform here, I'm going to make sure that I'm transforming from the bottom. And then I'm going to select my artboards and drag the top down. My artboard is there. Uh, and then I'm going to set that to a whole number. Uh, so make that 184. Okay, and with that on 184, I'm just going to grab my SVG and just snap that to there. So basically, we've got perfectly sized, so it's 200 wide uh, by a whole number. So weird thing happens when you've got um, half numbers or half steps with um, uh, Adobe Illustrator, um, where it adds or uh, subtracts uh, pixels. So I like to keep it to whole numbers for that reason. And we want to make sure we transform from the bottom because when we do our image mask, we're going to actually extend the top and, uh, and use that. So now we've got our first blob. So I'm going to File, Save as a Copy. And we're going to call this our blob. Uh, we might give it a number, 1. And we'll call it uh, dash B, uh, BG for background. OK, so there's the starting point. Now what we need to do, that is the background image. Oh, sorry. I haven't saved it yet. So in, in Illustrator, uh, what we want to do is just make sure the only really important thing is here is we need responsive ticked and we need style elements ticked. If we don't have style elements, I'll show you what happens. We get presentation attributes. We haven't got SVG. We don't have any classes on here, so it's styling the actual paths. Um, if, uh, if we set that to style elements, uh, and have a good SVG code. We've actually got a view box of 200 by 184, and we've got a style here, ST0, which we can override in, uh, in our builder. Uh, and that's just applying the class to it. So by setting the style elements, we get exactly what we're wanting. Okay, so I'm going to save that now. Okay, now next step is we need to create our mask. So, what I'm going to do is select my artboard, make sure that I'm transforming from the bottom, just drag my artboard up a little bit. So our image shouldn't go any higher than that. Maybe that's too big, maybe about there, uh, maybe a little bit more. We don't want to go too high, but uh, set this to a whole number again. So we make that say 340. Whatever works for the imagery that you're going to use. Okay, so now we've got an artboard that's 340 high, 200 wide, and the SVG is sitting at the bottom of that. All right, so next step. We need to block off where we want this to go to. Easiest way I found is to create a uh, rectangle. It should have the same settings as your imported SVG, which is the same fill and no stroke. So we get from the top left corner and drag down to say, uh, maybe here. 
I'm going to snap to the edge, so snap to the right there. And we're going to grab both of those and we're going to join them together using our Pathfinder. So now we've got an SVG where that shape's there, but then it curves around to this. Now we want to tidy this up a little bit because we're going to want it to be a nice curve. So I'm just going to control, or sorry, Alt, use my mouse wheel, uh, use my pen tool. I'm going to add some points here uh, and here maybe. Uh, I don't want to affect this curve here. So now I'm going to select my node selection. I'm going to delete this point here. That deleted the actual connection. That's okay though. We're going to change that. I'll delete uh, this one. And maybe what we'll do is then use our pen tool here to. No, we're going to affect that previous one. Okay. We need to add another point. So maybe go another point down here. And then use our node selection. This gets a bit tricky because what we don't what we don't want to do is change the shape of the path. Um, like that. Yeah, there we go. Now we can do that without affecting. Looks like it's going to affect the other path there. Okay, so what we're going to do is try adding another point. Maybe there. Just zoom in a little bit more on that so we can see what we're doing. Uh, might just move that down so it's not affected. Okay, now select this node and select the pen tool and then connect those. All right, I think that's okay. Yeah, it's right on the edge here, and we've got a bit of a smooth corner here. Now we can play with that now. Um, so we can actually change our anchors a little bit to smooth that out. Try not to. Don't want to affect this curve too much here. All right, so that's that side. Uh, maybe he was so much mucking around there, just leave this side. Same sort of thing, you can smooth that out if you want. You want a curve in there instead of a um, square, uh, a um, sharp edge. Now, I'm just going to make this black. Um, I don't know if it makes any difference, but I'm just going to make it black uh, because that's going to be my mask. So it just makes more sense to me being black. I'm going to save that now. So file, save as a copy. And in this case, I'm going to call it blob1bg mask. Okay, so there we go. So we just created a. Uh, why didn't it save that? We haven't come up. Oh, keep forgetting, you've got to wait for the dialogue to come up. So make sure you're on style elements and then hit the um, OK to save that. And now downloads now. So we've got our original blob, which is not what we're going to use. That was the one from Blob Maker. A blob that we're going to use as our background and a blob that we're going to use as our mask. Okay, head over to our. Scratch here, and what we're going to do first is just add into that SVG. So that's the blob there. We're going to add the code in there. So uh, from our mask that we created, sorry, the uh, background we created, I'm just going to right click and open that with Notepad so we get just the SVG code. Copy all of that, and back to bricks and paste that into our basic text box and that's going to give us our SVG. Now it's not properly set up yet um, so we have to now create some styles. In fact what I might style this up first and then we'll do we'll deal with the actual mask on that as well. So I'm going to head back to my top level BEM and I'm going to pinch that name go into my style actually root is probably going to do this anyway so if I just do root uh, and what I'm going to do is, uh, you can do this in the Bricks UI, but I'm going to do it here because it just makes more sense for um, readability. So I'm going to set my position to relative. And the reason we do that is we're going to set the 
um, SVG to a absolute position. We want to set our isolation to isolate. The reason we do that is we want to put the SVG behind the image, but we don't want it to disappear behind the content. So we're creating a new ZNX stacking order at that block. Okay, so from this point here, we then need to target the uh, SVG. So I'm going to grab that name again. If you want to be more specific, you can put root in front of this as well, but I don't think you need to because these names are specific enough. Okay, so the blob, we're going to make it uh, position. Absolute. We're going to set the uh, bottom to zero. And we're going to set the width to 100%. Okay, there's our blob. Now we're going to set the Z index to minus one. Okay, so that puts the blob behind the image. All right. Now what we need to do is work on the, uh, actually we need to make the girl 100%. The image has got to be 100% so it fits the blob as well. So now we're going to grab the uh, figure class and we've got to make sure we set that to be a width of 100% as well. Uh, okay, with 100%. And just in case the image, I'm not sure if it's going to be inside the uh, inside that is going to be already 100%. We'll set that to 100% as well. Okay, I could have put it just a comma uh, with 100%. Okay. Could have just put a comma and that after it, but I might want to treat these a little bit differently. So let's just see. So, so what we do is we want to mask our figure now. All right, so we've got the girl here, she's masked, but we want that blob shape to mask the girl. So let's grab some, uh, actually first we need to do is upload the mask. So if we use our media library and grab our mask that we created, Get our mask here, so we've got the media library open, we're going to get our mask, we're going to drag that in there, so there's our blob mask that we want, and all we need is the relative path, so just from the slash WP content, we're just going to copy that, okay, I've already saved a uh, class here with that, so I'm just going to update my paths here, and we have need the just to be certain, we need the both the WebKit and the non-WebKit versions um, of these. So I'm going to grab that, head back over my builder, and that was in the figure. Okay, there we go. We've now set a mask uh, of our uh, mask SVG that we just uploaded um, as the mask for the figure. And we've set the background size to cover and the position of that mask to the bottom. You can see a really strange thing happening here. And what it turns out is, I think, I can't remember whether it's the one above or in this one. I think it's this one here. We have to set display to block, uh, to flex. No, it's not on that. Oops. We need to go up the next level up. We need to set on the... Let's just leave it at that for now. I'll find it on the front end. If we just save that now, we've automatically got... Okay, so we've got our mask girl, but we've got a problem where the uh, mast image is extending beyond the blob. It's to do with something to do with the way the SVG is being placed. Uh, that's right, we have to set the SVG here. We have to set the display to flex. And that solves the problem. I'm not sure why the default display of that basic text block is that it was a div is um, block, um, but it seems to add some additional spacing at the bottom. So we've got to change that display to flex there. So that was on the 
SVG. So let's go back to that. That is on our blob. We're going to set the display on the blob. Just watch this over here. You can see the girl here, her arm is sitting maybe 10 pixels below the blob. But when I change it to flex, it fixes it. The blob moves down. So why? I'm not sure, but uh, it, it, it works. All right, so now we've got our um, masked girl with the blob. Okay, so you can actually see it's masking the entire image and the shape that we've got actually digs into the side of this lollipop. So you'll be careful with your images. What do you actually want to extend outwards and what don't you want to extend outwards? So you've got to be careful what images you use um, or change the shape of your blob to, uh, blob to suit what images you're going to have. Now, a couple of things that uh, we've achieved here is that we can easily change the background color of that blob and we can easily change the um, positioning of this girl in there. So let's have a look at that. So let's look at the actual SVG. Where's our SVG, the blob there. Look at the content here, and I'm gonna look inside the content, and we've got a class which has got ST0, okay? What I would probably do is change that to something different um, so that um, we can target it. Um, and what I'm going to change this to is I'm going to call this uh, Blob Mask. Actually, let's give it a name similar to what you've got here. Keep our BIM naming, actually. Let's look at that. So let's change this. Okay, let's make it the class. We'll call that SVG. Okay, and we're going to get rid of style there because we're going to replace that in our. So now we just got a black background because it's got no color. Head back to our styles over here on the blogger mask. We're going to create a new class down here so that we can color things. Let's set our fill on that. Fill red. Now we've got a red background. Fill green. Now we've got a green background. Even better still, um, what we're going to do is at the very, very top here, at our top level, we're going to create some CSS variables. So let's go blob color. Now I think I've got uh, a CSS on here. So I'm going to put um, var, I can't remember if I've got it on here, but I'm going to put var primary. And down in the SVG down here, I'm going to say var blob color. Okay, now I've got my primary color there, right? So if I want to change this on any other element, all I have to do is go to my variable up the top here and make, make that secondary. Yeah, and now it's my secondary color. Okay, so using these scope variables. Um, on this design means that you can easily replicate this, apply this class to it, override these variables, and away you go. So, all right, so next thing we're going to do is look at a little trick to see how effective this is. I'm going to target the image, and I'm going to set the transition, uh, transform, of uh, translate, Y, and maybe we'll do that, say, 8 pixels. Okay, so we're going to move her down by 8 pixels. So the whole thing hasn't moved, just the girl has moved down because we're only targeting the image. All right, and then we're going to... Um, what do we want to target? The whole blog mask figure, which is the image. That's okay. We probably could put this on the root, but let's just do it here so it makes a bit of sense. And we're going to back to zero when we hover. 
Okay, let's just see if that works. There we go. So it just moves. So it's translated by Y of um, 10, uh, 8 pixels down. And as we hover, it moves up. Now let's put some timing on that. So let's do a translate. Was it called uh, transition? Uh, we'll just do all for now, and we'll make the transition when it's returning 0 0.3 seconds. Okay, and we won't worry about any easing just yet. You can add your own easing. And on this one, we're going to tell it when we hover, we want it to take 0 0.7 say seven seconds. There we go. We have a nice little hover effect, okay? Uh, let's make our cursor uh, pointer a cursor. Now this could easily be a, a link, I okay, guess, to something. Let's have a look at that now. So we've got a girl here masked by a blob, we hover, and I got the wrong uh, pointer on there. But you can see that she's moving up and down within that blob mask, and she, the whole image is being masked, actually including this lollipop, which we've got to be careful with what image you're using. So be careful with your mask. Maybe you make the bottom part a little bit narrower or not as tall uh, if you're going to have things pointing off to the left or the right, because everything above this point here where you can see that line there everything above that point there is a hundred percent visible anything that's within that blob shape below that is masked by the image mask so yeah that's my way of doing this um, you can also look at um, the the other example i think they had um, uh, some other stuff around it. So what I would probably do there is I'd add another block maybe, uh, add another block. Okay, and oops. Here we go. Uh, a block there. And this one here, I would put maybe inside the other block. Uh, that way there, we can put some, uh, maybe some padding on that. So let's do an all-round padding of say 50 pixels and that makes it centered in there and then we can set the position on that to uh, relative uh, then we can actually position other stuff around it so we might have other blob shapes uh, it's just plain old SVGs we can use either um, divs or, or these um, uh, basic text or we can use before and after elements whatever you like but that is another way of doing it and I think this uh, this works. There we go. She's inside there, but it's still behaving exactly the same way. So anyway, so anyway, that's uh, me done. So hopefully that is useful and gives you a little bit of insight as to how you can achieve some of these cutouts using SVGs uh, just by preparing them. Maybe starting with something from Blob Maker, preparing them in uh, Illustrator where you have a my windows in the way here. In Illustrator, where you have a basic uh, blob shape that you've uh, created from Blob Maker, make it sure that it's 200 pixels wide right to the edges. Make sure there's no white space at the top of that by sizing. Uh, create a second copy of that where you mask out a complete area above that and just blend the blob shape into that, and that becomes your mask. Uh, and then basically, the rest of it's in the tutorial so hopefully that makes sense oh yes one last thing a quick afterthought on this is um, the photo or the image is going right to the edge of these blobs um, which is fine if in Photoshop you allow some transparency on the sides but maybe a better way is to actually only crop your Photoshop files to the edge of the uh, where the images are images um, and um, we'll actually size that with CSS to give you a little bit more control so a couple of simple things here is in the editor all you've got to do is go to your uh, rule here for your figure and then the image so the image inside the figure make the width say 90% and then on the figure itself, set the display to flex and the justify content to the center so it centers along there. So if you don't do that, so if I go left or anything, see it's at the beginning, uh, we want that in the center. So 
So we'll put it in the center across there. Uh, and the other thing here is if we want to change that, we can make it say 80%. We've got a smaller, smaller girl inside there. 90%, so that's at 80 now. Let's have a look at what that does. So there we go, we've got more of the blob around the girl, and she's still peeking out from there. So it just gives us some spacing on the side so we see more of the blob in the background. Uh, should have done that in the first place, but this was just an afterthought, so I thought I'd just chuck it in here. Okay. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.